This is the Yamava Resort and Casino, formerly known as the San Manuel Casino. It has been at the top of my list for years, and I finally visited it. In this video, I will share my personal experiences at the casino, along with its history and the history and culture of their people. The Yamava Resort and Casino is located in Highland, California, about 60 miles from Los Angeles and 54 miles from my hometown of Orange, California. These were some of the holiday decorations in the walkway that connects the parking structure to the casino. And they had a replica of the Palms in Las Vegas, now under their ownership. I will be doing a video on it in the future. Christmas and the culture of the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians don't necessarily go together, but I love that they are willing to please Christmas lovers with these beautiful displays. My walkthrough of this casino was great, and I think that this has to be my favorite Indian casino, but Morongo and Pachango are pretty close. The Yamava Resort and Casino features a 17-floor hotel tower with 432 rooms and suites, an elevated pool deck, a lavish full-service spa and salon, and 24-hour in-room dining. And I just had to explore their beautiful hotel lobby. And this is the Overlook Bar. For generations, their tribe has persevered through great change and extreme hardship. They lived in harmony with the land across the highlands, passes, valleys, and mountains in and between the southwestern Mojave Desert and the Inland Empire. They were known as the People of the Pines, and they thrived as an independent, self-sustaining community. Their way of life changed forever in the beginning of the 1780s as their people in the Antelope Valley and Mojave Desert regions were decimated by European diseases, being forced from their villages and sent to the San Gabriel Mission as free labor to Spain. Many Serrano people were involuntarily marched to the Asistencia in Redlands, which served as an outpost to the San Gabriel Mission. Agricultural pursuits irreversibly changed the land that the Serrano depended on and pushed the Serrano out of their most fertile lands. By the mid-1800s, after both the Spanish and Mexican governments had been removed from the area now called California, the Serrano people were overrun by American settlers. Originally, the ancestors of the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians lived in Big Bear Valley, but they were driven out of the mountains and reduced to only 20 to 30 people. In 1891, the San Manuel Reservation was established. And then their community came together to begin a new way of life while honoring their culture and traditions. Remembering their near extermination is a testament to their perseverance and resilience. Today, the reservation, once only 640 acres, is now 1,100 acres. Ancestral Serrano Territory covers present-day Antelope Valley on the west, the southwestern Mojave Desert to the north, portions of the San Gabriel and San Bernardino Mountains in the center, areas around Riverside to the south, and 29 Palms to the east. According to their creation story, high in the San Bernardino Mountains at Yahaviat, an area of pine trees near Big Bear Lake, Kukta their creator laid dying. When Kukta died, their grief turned into pine trees, which enriched the land with vegetation and animals, 
allowing future generations to thrive. As a result of colonization, their tribe is modernly known as the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians. Their preferred name is Yehaviatum, or People of the Pines. The name San Manuel comes from the Spanish name of the leader, Santos Manuel, who led their people out of the mountains and into safety when their people were on the verge of annihilation. The Act of Relief for Mission Indians was passed in 1891, which recognized the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians' right to self-govern as a sovereign nation. But this was not enough, with much of tribal life still controlled by the federal government. In the 1960s and 1970s, nationwide protests strengthened relations between Native Americans and the federal government. Even Richard Nixon spoke out on behalf of having a policy of self-determination for Indian tribes in 1970. Then, the Indian Self-Determination and Education Assistance Act was signed into law in 1975. The introduction of tribal gaming on the reservation in the mid-1980s brought about a more secure economy and enabled the tribe to rebuild its government. With their federally recognized independence intact and their future in mind, they began to explore opportunities for new businesses both off and on the reservation. Currently, Yamava Resort and Casino is one of the largest employers in the Inland Empire. In the mid-1980s, the San Manuel tribe invested in a high-stakes bingo operation, San Manuel Indian Bingo. The bingo operation was a major success, and in 1994 they expanded to include a 100,000 square foot casino. Since then, their casino has undergone several renovations and expansions throughout the years. The most recent being reopening as the Yamava Resort and Casino in 2021, and they added a theater in 2022. So, I walked around the casino many times trying not to miss anything, but I know that there are things that I missed. A fun fact, the Yamava Casino is the seventh largest in the US. It also has the most slots and the most types of slots of any casino on the west coast. The main gift shop was the least exciting part of my visit. Unlike the main gift shop, the Rock and Brews merch shop was really cool. For those who don't know, Rock and Brews is the restaurant partially founded by Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons of the rock band Kiss. George Lopez's Mexican restaurant looks good. I hear they have churros with chocolate and caramel sauce.
And then there is the elevated dining experience at the Pines Modern Steakhouse that includes a Sunday brunch buffet. They also have a Starbucks, and I got a Frappuccino. Then I went to the Serrano Buffet, which was my first buffet since before the pandemic. They have a lobster buffet on Wednesdays and Thursdays, but I only got to have the regular one, but it was still great. They also have brunch on weekends. Note to future self. And I got a coffee to go. If the coffee wasn't enough, I got an energy drink for the drive back. Another cool thing I discovered is the San Manuel magazine, which is part self-promotion, part educational. This magazine helped my research for this video. The San Manuel apparently caught the fashion bug. Then they talk about having four brunch options. The Pines, Serrano Buffet, Rock and Brews, and the Radiance Cafe. And check out the epic parking of the Yamaba, which is bigger than the hotel and casino itself. Subscribe and hit the thumbs up for self-reliance and be magical.